Good to see you again. Good to see you guys too. <laughs> Finals, right? I mean, not exactly the way you planned, but you're here, right? So what's, what's the uh, emotion like for you right now? You know, uh, it feels good to be here, man. Uh, I've said it on my social medias and stuff like that. Uh, it's a blessing, man. It's honestly a blessing to get that call once again and, and uh, just prove who I am and, uh, and make a statement here with the UFC. That's awesome. Um, what, was the, what was the timeline? Obviously, you know, we, we found out when and I think Dana told TMZ was how it broke or whatever, but I don't know if they were holding on to that. Like, when did you find out you were going to be here? I, I literally found out right before that, in, uh, that interview. <laughs> Yeah, so they told me like 10 days, 10 days notice, yeah. But uh, hey man, I, I've, been, I've been working hard and, and I've been training with uh, the best in the world, you know. I've been working on some ground with Craig Jones in Austin, Texas and uh, you know, staying sharp with my brother Flacco. Um, yeah, just working with all my bros. I got all my bros in my corner this time, so I got all the confidence in the world that I need. That's awesome. As far as training, I mean, but were, were you training for a fight? Like did they have you on this card at all or were you, were you, or were you not on here? You know, I, I wasn't on the card at all, to be honest. But uh, I was, you know, I was just staying patient. My, my pops is my manager. Um, so he basically told me, like, hey, Gil, you got to do what you got to do, you know. Stay busy, stay working, because uh, the UFC is going to give you a call, whether it's 10 days notice, like, like it is, or, or a week's notice, you know, a couple days notice. You know, I'm, I'm ready, man. Uh, at 185 pounds, I'll be ready for anyone. Uh, and, and hopefully in the future, I'll get the call at 170 pounds as well, and, and I'll run, run both the tables. When you got the call, was there any discussion at all, or was it literally just like, yeah? Or I mean, did you, you go, well, let me talk to my team. We'll we'll figure it out. You know, pops pops is uh, is the main man, so he said, yes, sir, we're fighting. He didn't even ask me. He just told me we're fighting. But you know, that's that's how I started this career. You know, uh, I was 18 in high school. Like I said on my first interview with you guys, uh, I was I lost my my uh, my state wrestling match to get to the finals, and and pops knew I was pissed to to go to wrestle D1. I needed to win state, so. My dreams of wrestling in college were over immediately. As soon as I lost, I knew it. That's why the tears came out. But uh, Pops was like, man, go out there and leave it on the line. Like, go finish this tournament, and you know what's coming next, you know? And I was like, what's coming next? He's like, you're fighting. Let's go. That's so, awesome. yeah, it's, it's, it's cool, man. Me and my bros love this shit, so it's, it's what we do. Very cool. Uh, so talk about the matchup. Obviously a teammate. Um, give me, give me the, the scouting report, the idea. How, how do you think you guys match up? I think we match up good. You know, I was, I've been telling the UFC and everybody asking me, what do I think about the fight or how it'll play out? I've been watching the, the, the reel on the UFC where they show uh, Stefan Bonner versus uh, Forrest Griffin. And I, th I see me and Brian as two big bodies, you know. They were calling us the Twin Towers and stuff on the season. And, and you know, we're just two big bodies willing to put it all on the line. That's awesome. So how would you judge your, your, your whole Ultimate Fighter experience? I mean, obviously it's a family tradition at this point. Uh, I, I'm assuming if you win, it'll be a little bit sweeter, but as it stands right now, what did you think about the whole experience? You know, the, ex the experience is great, man. Uh, going out there and just doing stuff on my own for, for the first time in my life really was, was awesome. When it came to cooking, like my family had my back. They were like teaching me recipes and keeping me clean. My little brother, John, actually, he's my, he's my chef. Uh, he just turned 18. He's been doing culinary for a couple of years. So, uh, you know, he's keeping me honest and stuff and, and gave me some great pointers. Uh, just, being, just being in my own mind, you know, and, and having to focus on my own and, and not have those uh, affirmations from my brothers telling me that I'm the best because they know it, you know. They train with me every day and they, and they know what I got. That's awesome. And I guess last thing for me, um, how are you looking at this? I mean, it's kind of like a gift opportunity, right? So, I mean, is this a, hey, whatever happens, happens type thing and this is just another step in the journey or do you feel like, Man, everything's on the line right here. I, I, I gotta win. You know, this is uh, this is another opportunity, and uh, and I'm just blessed to be here, like you said. But uh, no, I'm not. I'm not just taking this as whatever happens, whatever happens. I've been working hard for this opportunity ever since the tough show. I've been focused, and I've been I've been hungry. You know, my family knows it too. They would they would didn't see the nicest skill or being after the tough. You know, I was I was more in my head. I was a little bit more like ready to fight again. You know, I've I've been itching, and. Uh, yeah, I'm just ready to, like you said, put it all on the line, man. That's, that's, that's what I definitely am going to do, and uh, I'm going to win the ultimate fighter this season. I'm going to bring it home for the fam. Team Urbina, you already know. RGV956, we coming. You know, like, we're representing all of Texas, too. I was, I was like I said, I was training in the capital, Austin, Texas. Uh, I got great training partners out there. I'm, I'm, I can't wait for after this fight to get back out there and keep evolving, you know, whether it's at 10th Planet Austin with those guys out there, with the B team, Craig Jones. The B team, shout out to the B team, you know, like, hey, I'm on the B team, you know. They gave me, they gave me this shot. I, I, didn't make, I didn't make the A list. I didn't make the finale. But they had to call into the B team and, and call Gilbert Urbina out here to put on a show.
Do you feel like that possibly you winning um, in this manner could possibly mean a little bit more than if you had gone through like, just like normal, like anybody else, having to come in on short notice? Would that be a little bit sweeter, you think? You know, I, I come to fight every time, every, every single fight, I come to fight my best fight. And, uh, you know, it, it, I may feel those emotions after the fight, but I'm just so zoned in and focused on what I got to do. Uh, having my brothers with me too, like I said, is, is just such an advantage because throughout the season I didn't have that. You know, I didn't have people to talk to really. I kind of stayed on my own. I don't know if you guys noticed on the season, a lot of these guys were, were mutually hanging out with each other, playing cards. And it was cool, you know, I, I can't knock them. It's, it's trying to kill time. But to me, it was, it was preparing, it was uh, recovering, it was just being in my head. I was a little in my head, you know, and not, not the most motivated Gilbert Urbina. But now that I have my family with me and, and, uh, and my people with me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do great things. And just a fun one, was there anything that happened in the house that didn't make it on the show that you feel like fans might have been interested in? Other than uh, the, one, the one funny thing is those Aussies, they like to play, uh, they like to make bets. And if you lose the bets, you got to do a nudie run. And one funny thing was uh, Brian and Ryder ended up losing a bet in a uh, game of pool. And they did a nudie run. It was like, man, what are you guys doing, bro? And they kept, they kept chasing that shit after, after like the end of the season. They were here in the Apex. They actually did a nudie run throughout the Apex just for fun. And I was like, you guys are fucking wild. But, you know, people do what they want to do for TV time. Hey, it's cool, man. No, all respect. Like... They're having fun, you know. If that's what fun is for them, that's, that's cool. It would have been fun for the, for the people to see at least. If people would have been like, what the hell are these guys doing? Why are they doing a nudie run? But, yeah, it was funny. From the, thank you for sharing that experience with the Division One and all that and brought you to this point. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. How much more dangerous is somebody out of the B team? Because we know you guys want it just a little bit more. Yeah, um, you know. It's kind of like Craig Jones was saying, like being on the B team, it's like I'm, he's used to taking second place. He's, he's used to being the underdog, you know, and, and uh, I, I kind of like it, too. It's like it's like people have been counting me out and stuff like that. You know, like it's cool. It, it's all good, man. Honestly, everybody can say what they want to say. Everybody's got the free right to say what they want to say. And and, uh, you know, all blessings to everybody, regardless if it's good or bad. I'm just I'm stepping out here to do my job, man. And, and I love this stuff. So. And if you could make a prediction looking for the finish or we get, you know, just 15 minutes of war? You know, it's going to be 15 minutes of war for sure. I mean, I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to be all three rounds, but I always look for the finish. So, uh, you know, just be ready to see uh, Killer Gilbert Urbina Saturday night. All right, Killer Gilbert it is. Good luck Saturday. Thank you, brother.